is done. It always will be. I am inevitable. I have been making videos about the game Crusader Kings 3 for almost two years now. And in that time, I'd like to think I got pretty good at the game. But there is one challenge that even I am afraid to attempt. That's right, today I am going to be conquering every single realm in Crusader Kings 3, forming one giant super empire. I know what you're thinking. Zeely, that doesn't sound too hard. Once you snowball enough, you can just steamroll any realm on the map. Correct. But if there is to be a game ending issue on this run, it's going to come from internal pressure in my empire, not external. Because you could just be a couple of kingdoms away from taking over the whole world, and all it would take is one untimely character death, a few angry vassals, and you could have hundreds of thousands of men turning up at your palace gates. That is why for this game I am not going to be pulling any punches. I plan on using every cheesy game mechanic that I have been able to find over the last two years in hopes that it is enough to get me across the finish line. So buckle up, because today we are attempting a CK3 World Conquest. Even though this is probably the hardest thing I've ever tried to do in Crusader Kings 3, I still don't want to make it too easy, and for that reason I'm going to be starting as this lowly count, right smack in between Brittany and France, Count Hastine of Montague. So although I am playing as somebody who only has one county, and my goal is to take over the entire world, um, this character is arguably one of the stronger regions in the entire game. He has a pretty comparable military to, let's say, his neighbor, West Francia, King Charles the Bald. Okay. Who only has 5.2 thousand men, while we have 3.7. On top of that, we are Norse, which gives us access to a few really interesting game mechanics right off the beginning of the game. First of all, it gives us access to this special causes belly called the Varanian Adventures, where our people can just get up, um, abandon all of the current land they own, and then do a war for a duchy title somewhere else, where they will then become the ruler of that duchy instead. We also start with these two really strong groups of special soldiers. The only problem is you can see they stand down on succession, so when our character dies, these guys will go away. So where do we plan on invading now that we have a causes belly that lets us take any duchy pretty much in the whole western portion of this map? Well, if you're a fan of the channel, you know there's only one option, and that is the papacy. <laughs> I'm in danger! The Pope is actually the weakest he will ever be right in the beginning of the game, and if you look at his troop numbers, he only has 2,000 men, and his gold hasn't had a chance to start stacking yet. So, at this point, we can pretty much declare war on him for the duchy title, Latium. And if we raise all our men, we can then run them over here and start doing some damage. It doesn't even matter if we attack him over a river, because if we look at this advantage modifier, you can see our crazy <laughs> commander skill is outweighing their commanders by 20, pretty much being the entire difference in this battle which should lead us to getting some very nice kills on this army. And there you go, now that we have taken Rome, we hit 100% against the Pope, we can enforce our demands, and we have picked up the Duchy of Latium, which includes Rome and all its glorious, glorious buildings. So the first thing I'm going to do is raise one of these nice rune stones in Rome because um, if we do a Conquer Runestone, you can see that actually gains us a lot more um, control per month. And if we look at our control in Rome, it is only uh, 50. But I did pick up Serve the Crown and Authority Focus, my two favorite perks that increase the control really fast. Because the faster we can get the control up in these three counties, um, the faster we can get our gold income up. 
as well as our military power. I'm not going to forget about this um, court position, which actually gains you a little bit more control per month for the price of gold. And I think that's very worth it. So we're going to hire this guy, I think, right here, who's going to get us 0 0.2 control per month. And then finally, if I put our marshal on increased control in county, you can now see we will be making 1.3 increase of control per month in Rome, the capital, and then these other counties are going to be going up by 0 0.6, which is pretty healthy as well. It has been three years since the game start, but if we can get everything going here in our first life as Count Hastings, we could become incredibly strong in just 10 to 15 years. And by everything, I mean... I want to convert religions this life, I want to uh, create a hybrid culture this life, as well as take some other very important pieces of land. So if we can get all that done, I think we could be in the perfect position to invade the rest of the world, creating some kind of cursed Viking Roman Empire. And the next thing in my master plan that we will need to uh, get, get doing here is invading Sardinia because I want to get control of this county right down here, which is where you can see there is a slot for a special building and that special building is a silver mine that will pretty much keep our economy afloat the entire um, beginning of this game. There you go, easy as that. 100% gets us three more counties. You can see our limit is five for how many holdings we can have. So I'm going to have to grant away these two titles. I just want to make sure I'm not going to have any penalties for being over my domain limit. And then right away, if we go over here, you can see for the low, low price of 360 gold, we can start constructing this silver mine, which is going to net us 3.0 tax per month. You can see that's going to double our gold income right in the beginning of the game once that's built. Um, we still have more land to invade, and this time I'm going to launch a um, conquer county war on Egypt, actually, because I need to grab a piece of Egyptian land in order to create a hybrid culture with the Egyptians. There you go. So now we want to grant this away to a uh, Egyptian character. And then if we go to our uh, counselors, you can see we have this promote cultural acceptance task with our steward. And now when we look at the Egyptian culture, you can see we're going to be going up 0.46%. I'm pretty sure that's per month. And we just have to get to 20 actually in order to create a hybrid culture. And the reason for that is because um, the Norse culture has this malleable invaders cultural tradition, which you can see lowers the cost of um, creating hybrid cultures but also you can see it requires 50% less than normal, which is honestly really good. I'm going to try to keep this for a while because every 50 years you can create a new hybrid culture. And there are a few other cultures that I want to um, hybridize with in order to get, you know, some special men at arms units or some other type of benefits down the line. Next on the docket, I'm going to go on a pilgrimage because, because I do want to convert this life, as I mentioned before. You've got mail. Man, I don't want to talk to your bitch. Oh, we have some peasants. Some Italian peasants who look like they want to rise up against me. Oh. Now what I should do with my money is probably start investing it in um, into my men at arms. Because you can see our special armies here are getting pretty weak. They don't replenish after um, if I lose men from them. I think I'm just going to go for Varanian veterans because they're the strongest. They are also the most expensive, but I don't think money is going to be a big problem this game for us. Especially when we just finished the um, silver mine, which you can see is now making us 4.32 tax per month with that silver mine done. Oh, what the hell? How did he get over here? retake my land and that should actually get me to 100%. Enforcer Demands gets us 140 gold. You know, I will take that because I can pump that into my nice um, Varenian veterans, actually get them to tier three. All right, so we've also earned enough piety to be able to go ahead and convert. Uh, and the religion we want to convert to is this Christian faith right here. And it's actually a pretty powerful faith right off um, the start of the game because it has both lay clergy 
which lets you hold your own temple buildings, of which we have uh, a couple over here, as well as Anaconism, which reduces the cost for making temple holdings and the buildings in them, which is an incredibly powerful combo. If you watch my videos, you know I'm a huge fan of Anaconism and Lay Clergy. Um, the only thing I don't really like about this religion is that it has a uh, pluralist doctrine, which means when you do Holy Wars, instead of getting every county from the holy war personally you get around half of them personally and then the other half remain uh the vassals who had it before which is normally a problem because those vassals tend to hate you if you just holy ward them however i do plan on reforming this religion anyway down the line in order to get rid of that and maybe pick up some other tenants that can help us taking over the rest of the world so we're going to go ahead and convert to faith here I well, you can see our temples, our holdings just went through the roof because we are now holding all these temple holdings. I can just grant these away, honestly, to local people because I already had five of five domains. I might keep, however, um, these two temples here and just go one above our domain limit because if I go into them, you can see if I want to build something, we're actually already getting a 33% discount and I plan on reducing this even further because of course I am still increasing my cultural acceptance with the Egyptians but the whole reason I want to make a um, hybrid culture with the Egyptians is to pick up agrarian which as you can see right here decreases the cost of building in farmlands by a further 20 percent if we look at Rome every single one of these holdings is built on farmland so we would be getting a 53 percent discount in these temple holdings right off the rip as well as we could potentially create two more temple holdings over here in these empty tiles and have four holdings where we'd be getting 50% discount on buildings which would just let us absolutely snowball um, like crazy here in the early game. We also actually because this is a holy site for our uh, religion um, we have a special building the Grand Cathedral which we can make here as well which is Pretty awesome. So we just got murdered actually. Um, I did not expect that, I'm not gonna lie. That I think that's okay actually. We did everything we had to do as Count Hastings. We just converted, which was good. Did our son convert? Yeah, he did also. So I think it's fine that we died. We can still hold five of five holdings and we can try to marry somebody. I'm gonna actually sort by somebody with inheritable traits. Um, if I marry a genius, like this 30 year old, uh, we have the quick trait, so we could have a lot of kids here reinforcing the intelligence trait, and that could be huge for the rest of our game because, as you probably know, genius is like the best trait in the world. And the other thing we're gonna have to do is declare a war for our claims against our brother who ended up taking this land, um, who ended up getting the Duchy of Sardinia from us on succession. Um, I will need to first gain some more prestige before being able to do this. <laughs> He's just a kid, so it shouldn't be too hard to win. Uh, at least we were able to build all of those men at arms units before Count Hastings died. Okay, 100%, we captured our brother. Unfortunately, we cannot revoke this title away from our brother. We can instead just murder him because if you see he's 10 years old so he doesn't have any kids so we are actually his heir so after our brother dies we will then get the county back and that'll give us our um all our beautiful gold that we're kind of missing out on right now do it and we got him so uh we get our nice little county here back okay one more percent there you go we can create a hybrid culture with the egyptians finally i'm gonna go for spiritual because that's gonna help us a little bit later. And then for our traditions, I definitely wanna keep malleable invaders. The other big reason I wanted to form a hybrid culture with the Egyptians is you can see we're gonna get four technologies from this, which is really good. There you go. I'm gonna need my culture in Rome because that's the whole reason we got, we wanted to form the hybrid culture was to get agrarian to make things cheaper in Rome. So once we finish this, which is gonna take 10 years, which is kind of long, um, then I can start working on things like the Grand Cathedral, which is going to have a crazy discount and really start pumping buildings into this county here. Um, I'm also going to start researching Onager because I am now the culture head, which is good. And you can see it's pretty quick, 23 years. 
but it's only gonna get faster like once we get Rome on our culture it's gonna more than double our average development for this culture which is gonna really help our research speed we are also almost finished promoting culture which is gonna be a huge moment in the game you can see I'm pretty much saving all my gold to be able to drop it the second this goes through there you go it also makes it so we get an insane discount on every building um, in my temples here and then even to be fair even the capital county we're getting a pretty decent discount of 35 percent because of agrarian and it's all farmlands but look at this guys so i'm gonna get started on a ton of buildings here like i said i'm pretty much going to be going tax buildings only 64 gold for these manor house buildings is absolutely insane we're already making 20 gold per month but just you wait until you see how high that is gonna go hello there we have finished the uh, grand cathedral we are now making um seven tax from this one temple but also all our other temples as you can see are going to be gaining plus 20 percent tax so this county is going to be insane for us in terms of making money. money i think the combo i should probably go for in um all these temple buildings is regimental grounds um it's probably regimental grounds plus mansions plus crop fields uh it's just a disgusting combo in this in the one on the coast though i'm gonna go for farms and fields manor houses and small harbors for the development instead oh actually i can just make the kingdom of sardinia i forgot i could do this that's probably the best idea because i want to get a kingdom to have a court but also it gives us an extra men at arms unit as well as an extra holding so becoming a king is pretty much the next thing i'm going to worry about and i just have to get 500 gold to do that so you know just wait around a couple months and i'll be there honestly Okay, so I just picked up the final per point necessary in order to get profit. So now if we go to our religion, you can see we can create a new faith only for this price. However, that's going to go up because we do have to change off of uh, pluralist onto righteous. Well, I'll keep this tenant because it makes temperate a virtue and I do enjoy playing with temperate. But instead, I'm going to try to take something like maybe armed pilgrimages because you can see it reduces the faith required um, in order to declare holy wars. And we will need a lot of faith to do all the holy wars we want to do. All right, so I think we're pretty much ready to go with our religion here, warmongerism. Let's create this faith. There you have it. Um, with our extra men-at-arms unit that we got from becoming a kingdom, I think I'm going to pick up uh, the light horsemen. We also have access to uh, camel riders, which I find pretty funny. But I want light horsemen because they have pretty good pursuit. So maybe I'll get like 400 of those guys. And then in just a few months, I think we can pick up onagers, which is going to be really nice. So I guess, you know, I'll just start taking some land here. Um, on the coast of uh, Italy. Uh, maybe holy war for a duchy next. No, I'll just do a county here. Um, it looks like the Byzantine Empire has collapsed to a disillusion war, exploded into a million pieces, but this is actually perfect for me because what I want to do next is try to invade a tiny piece of this Georgian guy's land because I want to get my cultural acceptance up with them because they have a very, very interesting cultural tradition which gets them access to this insanely powerful um heavy cavalry unit and as you can see our domain is already boosting heavy cavalry from all those uh regimental ground buildings we have so if i can get these guys we will be pretty much unstoppable so i just went into the new era which means if i look at our innovations we have new things unlocked i'm gonna go for manorialism because that'll actually let me upgrade and it'll let me upgrade all my temples to tier two and then all the buildings in the temples which is going to be very nice that's pretty much where we're getting all our power from right now but the real reason i was waiting to go up to the next era is because i can reform our culture and i can pick up by the sword now and i'm just missing 1.4 thousand prestige to be able to do this um, and that's going to be huge because it'll let us do kingdom level holy wars and those holy wars, because we change our religion to a uh, righteous um, doctrine, 
Once we win that holy war, we'll get all the counties personally and we can just redistribute it to vassals who we know will be loyal to us. And that's the way I'm going to stop, hopefully, I'm going to stop um, too many factions from rising up against us, even when we have most of the world under our control. My wife has died from cancer, but that's okay because I'm going to start by an infertile um, relationship and marry the person with the most stewardship. This is my favorite thing to do once I have my succession already sorted. If we look here on managed domain, she gains us plus 12 stewardship, meaning we can now hold two extra counties that we could not before. And now I'm holding 12 of 12 domains. Absolute insanity. All right, we just hit 5,000 prestige. I'm going to go over reform our culture, pick up a new tradition. By the sword is what we're going to get. It only actually takes five years to enable, which is really good um, to be able to declare unlimited holy wars. Like this challenge would be next to impossible uh, without it. There you go. Easy as you like. We'll have to grant this to a local Georgian noble. And now if we take our guy off of uh, increasing development and switch him to promote cultural acceptance. The only thing is we will have to wait 50 years. Uh, well, we won't have to wait 50 years, but we'll have to wait some years since we made our current culture. I formed it in 886. So in 50 years from that, which should be... 936 which is in about 20 years i have just hit 600 piety which is important because that's exactly how much we need to do a holy war on the kingdom of italy and i think it's about time we just start expanding you know getting more land i'm gonna launch this holy war even with my whole army raised, you can still see we're making 10 gold per month but that's fine because Oh, I just missed it. <laughs> oh, I just missed it. <laughs> I'm like letting <laughs> my seizing army is getting absolutely destroyed, but I am killing a lot of their men. Uh, you can see they're down to 6,000 now only. Not sure why uh, there's British people in this war also. I guess he had some, some strange allies. There you go. Now, if we enforce our demands, you can see we have just greatly increased the size of our kingdom and we get all of these lands personally, which is exactly what we want because now we can choose uh, how to distribute that land and then I can create all these duchies uh, after that. So there you have it, granted those away, and you can see we should go all the way up to 11,000 men now, only 57 years after the game started. We did just unlock manorialism, which means, as you can see, we can upgrade all of the temples, and we're going to be getting insane discounts to do that because we're still, uh, we still have the architect perk. It's going to take seven months only, so let's go around and upgrade every single temple. Our culture is only present in this um, land here, so we can't upgrade the any of the other temples around here. So we're going to want to start promoting our culture to some of these other places. And the first one I'll do is uh, down here in Sardinia because I want to keep this silver mine upgraded. So when we get battlements, we can then go to tier 2 silver mine, which gets us a lot more gold. Okay, and also it looks like we have hit... 600 piety again, so we can do another holy war. Could be fun to do Aquitaine actually, because it's pretty big. And I think we'd be able to take them without any difficulties. They only have 7,000 men with their ally. The only reason we're allowed to do this war is because we picked up that by the sword tradition, which lets us do multiple holy wars per lifetime now. Ooh, okay, so we finally died. Um, so our land is gonna split. Let's take a look here. If I wanted to revoke this, oh, perfect. He would actually accept. That's so nice. 
So we can revoke that title from my brother. And let's see this one. Okay, so this one here we cannot revoke. But you can see he actually doesn't have any kids. So if we do a murder scheme on our brother, um, we are his primary heir. So we're going to pick this up. So we did drop a little bit of strength. But you know, that's going to happen when you go from 12 to 8 holdings. And uh, we should still have no problem with winning this war. So I think I'm actually going to need to hire some holy orders here. Because it looks like our enemies have made some more alliances. And now they have 12,000 men. Okay, so I'm going to catch them kind of split up over here. Um, if I attack one of them on this tile, they're all going to have to come rush in. And yeah, I think the trickling is going to screw them. Also, this guy just chilling over here. He's just standing there. Menacingly! And there you go. A couple more battles, a couple more pieces of land. And we have taken all of the kingdom of Aquitaine for ourselves. <laughs> I guess I should just keep doing holy wars for kingdoms because you can see I have enough piety to do two more holy war for kingdoms right now. So I think that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, you can see I'm going to keep capturing land here with this army with all my onagers and then they are trying to invade my territory through here so I'm just going to run all my fighting forces there and we can probably get into a nice battle with them. Stop! You violated the law! Okay. Alright so uh I'm fighting like multiple battles right now. We got the peasants over here in uh, central France. Um, we got a few allies helping us out, but the thing about peasants is like, or they don't have many men at arms ever. So it's pretty easy to fight them. They also don't have any knights, which makes a big difference. So even when I have like a lot less men, we're normally still able to win these battles. So like when my allies come in here, we should take a pretty heavy lead. And every time you win a battle with the peasants, it's a stack wipe, which is nice as well. And then we are fighting over here on this area, but we have some allies coming in. And the thing about this battle right here is because it's a mountain and it's a mountain where we have a castle that we own, we get defending in um, mountains, which is a plus 12 to the advantage modifier, which makes a pretty big difference. Um, you can see we're getting plus 35 overall, which increases our damage by 70%. Um, should get a nice win there. And then of course we still have our cheeky little uh, onager army running around over here, taking land away from them while this is all going on. So my son and heir, he's actually my only son, which is perfect, so my land won't split on my death. So once he turns 16, we can actually appoint him as our court physician, and this is just an always, and this is always just a great way that he can pick up some physician traits, which increase his learning, but they also give him um, health bonuses, which is pretty good. Um, but I can enforce my demands here in Bavaria, but we do have a lot of new land that I will have to go through and uh, grant away now. I saw a post on um, the CK3 subreddit, or maybe it was the Crusader King subreddit, but it was saying that there should be a button to mass ransom all your prisoners, and that already exists. If you go to your court, actually, and you go to prisoners, there's this button right here, mass action, and you can just mass ransom anybody who's worth any money in your prison. So right now we have 54 gold. I'm going to ransom eight characters, and just like that, you can see... Um, we go all the way up to 400 gold. We ransom everybody in there. It's true there's no button like right here, which would be, I guess, a little bit uh, faster than having to do what I did. But still, it is going to save you a lot of time if you didn't know that. So let's launch this war. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I had to do, but I honestly don't think there was. And there you go. 100% gives us a lot more counties to grant away. So I think I've talked about this already, but what I'm trying to do here with my vassals is I'm granting all the land to vassals who are uh, either have one of these three traits, trusting, content, or 
um, humble and those three traits make it so that they're going to be less likely to join factions against you rise up against you all that stuff that you don't want to do because and then finally i'm granting them to people of our religion now that being said i kind of forgot to uh i was kind of just clicking very uh very quickly for these ones here in france but that's okay because once you grant them like you can see some of these guys i granted them seven counties so that gives them a huge opinion boost with you and then you can just go ahead and demand conversion, which is what I did for all these vassals that I accidentally granted them to Catholic people. So you should see here a ton of conversions coming in just like that. And now all these vassals will no longer be Catholic. Also, I think it's finally time for us to be able to go and form a hybrid culture with the Georgians. I probably could have done this about five years ago, but you know, we were a bit busy with wars and such. I'm trying to think if I want to keep spiritual or if I want to go for communal, which will actually reduce the cost and construction time of building buildings, which is pretty useful as well. I think I will go communal because if I'm not mistaken, this lets us put our court on a, uh, a stewardship court and then that'll give our kids more stewardship, which will then give us more room to hold domains personally. Uh, traditions wise, this is what is really important. I definitely want Caucasian wolves. This is the whole reason we were making this alliance or making this hybrid culture with the Georgians. I probably can get rid of coastal warriors because we have all the Norse men that we want. But I guess one thing we could do is like, let's say we could get rid of these, um, these Bondi units. But I'll make one more group of Varanian veterans because now I can get rid of coastal warriors and then I can still fill this out to five of five down the line. And that means we can take one other, um, one other perk. And yeah, I think I will keep performative honor just because it gives us another knight, which is pretty good. And there you go. So for only 250 prestige, we can create a hybrid culture with the Georgians. I won't be able to get these special horses yet because I don't have room for them. I don't have room for them, but look at how much damage they're going to be doing, guys. 136 damage um, before the year 10,000. That is absolutely crazy. Not only do they have crazy stats, but instead of getting, uh, instead of like normal horsemen, which actually lose damage in mountains and hills, they get a damage boost in, uh, in mountain and hill terrain, as you can see, and a pretty healthy one at that. So now we have the decision is ready. It's kind of a waste of gold, um, prestige and piety because like we could just create an empire of some of the land we already own, but I think it's more fun this way. Hooray! So let's found the new empire. It's going to be called the Empire of Sardinia, but that's not the name I'm going to want to go with. We're going to have to go in here and edit this. All right, guys, I'm no artist, but what do we think of this? I think it looks pretty good. You know, a little bit of the channel logo going on. There you have it, guys. We got New Zealand as our new empire, and it is looking mighty fine. So at this point, I have been recording this video for just over five and a half hours and we still have a lot of work to be done, but I just had a bowl of raviolis. Yeah. Ravioli, ravioli, what's in the pocket old? <sighs> and I am feeling refreshed and ready to go. So I just took uh, the Kingdom of Burgundy, it was pretty easy. And I found like the perfect vassal. Look at this guy. He has trusting, content, and lazy. Like there's no way this guy would ever rebel against me. And there you go. We have connected our two parts of our empire. I'm going to um, declare war over here in Crimea. Mainly because the last tradition I really want to pick up for this game is the horse lords tradition. Because what this does is um, it actually has these cool crazy horse archers units which are again another one of my probably my favorite units in the game just because they do so much damage but also because of their really high pursuit stat they have more pursuit than maybe any other unit in the game and that's a stat that's really important for any time you win a battle and the other and the enemy is retreating this is what determines how many kills you get during that retreating phase i'm going to take the whole duchy and then grind it away and start improving our uh, cultural acceptance down there Oh, okay, so we died. 
The main thing we have to worry about is our vassals not really liking us after our character's death. You can see we got some factions rising up here. We got this one, which wants to be an independence faction. And this one here, which is the disillusion, which is really bad. We don't want this to pass, that's for sure. Well, one way I'm going to deal with this from this point onwards is by having a lot of kids and marrying them off. So I have three sons here. So I can set up three alliances and I'm just going to go for the strongest person in these factions so like I can ally myself to the Duchy of Burgundy guy by marrying one of his daughters. This guy only has a son which is a bit of a bummer so I probably won't be able to marry him. However this character has a daughter so I can marry him off. Excellent. 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 And just like that we set up three alliances. Oh so actually look at this we brought the dissolution faction pretty low so they're too weak to send the ultimatum now which is perfect. So hopefully if we only have to fight this independence faction, I'm honestly not scared at all and we should be able to beat them pretty easily. You got mail. Okay, here we go. We have the independence faction that looks like it's going to go through. So I'm not going to be threatened by this. It says they have 2,000 troops, but that's always a lie. They actually have 24,000. Oh, I did ally myself to England right before this started, so we can call them to the war. Probably not 100% necessary, but you know, more allies the better. Okay, so I'm running around. We're getting some good murders off. As you can see, ooh, was this some stack wipes? Oh my goodness, the damage is absolutely mental. Um, I'm just going to keep cleaning up some of these smaller armies with my big stacks when I have them. Yeah, all these battles are just going great for us, so we should be able to defeat these guys pretty easily. The major advantage you have is you can raise all your army in one spot while well, they'll be pretty split up because they're a bunch of vassals from all over your empire. Like this will continuously tick to 100. As long as you're not like just losing battles flat out, you should pretty much be okay. And there you go. So good thing here, we're going to get to imprison all of these um, vassals who rose up against us. So I think if they have decent traits, like this guy with the content trait, I might let them go like we can ransom him for a hundred gold and you can see he is like really friendly with us so like he shouldn't want to rise up against us again but I think if anybody has this ambitious trait you can see that it gives them a minus 15 opinion with the liege um these people I'm gonna revoke the title from them and grant it somebody who's gonna like me a little bit more I think I'm gonna make a move for this holy site over here in Cologne because um it actually increases our cultural fashion fascination progress by um 10 so that's pretty decent we could do a holy war on lotharingia for their kingdom because they're not too strong and then i can do a holy war against east francia right after that for the kingdom of east francia all right so i just took i just finished taking both those kingdoms and now you can see we've done a great job of taking a whole lot of western europe However, we're still only a hundred years after the game start and we have a lot of work to be done. So I've been waiting to um, form my hybrid culture with the Russian, um, with the Russian Khazar hybrid culture. And I realize it's been saying um, culture is less than 50 years old, but I think it's talking about the Russian Khazar culture is less than 50 years old. Cause I'm pretty sure it's been more than 50 years since we hybridized our culture. So instead of continuing to wait for this, I'm going to actually go and replace, I'm going to reform our culture and replace one of the um, traditions just because we have so much uh, prestige as this character. I don't really want to waste it. And then there's a few things I want to pick up. One thing that's interesting would be guardian architects to increase our development. Now, that being said, uh, getting industrious would be even better because every time we make a building, we would uh, gain 25 development flat out once per year. So this is probably what I'm gonna go for instead of Garden Architect, because that really would only help in the capital anyway. And this I can instead use um, instead of my other in some of my other counties, like in Sardinia, where the development is low and it's not my capital. Ooh, look at this. We have a crusade cooking. Let him cook. Let him cook now. Let him cook. I think I will actually be a member of this. I don't think I have a choice even. I will have to be a member of this. 
But that's fine because it looks like gold, please. There is a war chest, so it doesn't look very big. I don't think we'll get that much money from it, but you know, any chance to knock the Pope down a couple pigs. We got our first Catholic Crusaders over here and they are quickly destroyed. They're actually invading me on the French coast for some reason. Like, is that even part of the crusade? What are they doing? All right, so they keep landing, but it's like some kind of alternate history where uh, where D-Day was, um, was fought in England and the Germans were very successful um, because we are just mowing them down every time they step foot on um, on England here. And as easy as you like, we actually hit 100%. What is our um, pull here from the war chest? 300 gold, gold you know, I'll take please. it. It's not like if we were the Catholics, like normally you could get 1,000 gold if you were uh, number one in the crusade, which I think we should have been. But you know, better than nothing. Oh, okay, and right after that crusade, it looks like we did die. I might want to make it so that if there's any vassals like this guy, you can see who is a uh, powerful vassal. We probably want them to be on our court, especially because you can see our court grandeur drops again. And that is that going to happen every time we die? Not really a fan of that. I'm not going to lie to you. So we probably will have some factions rising up. So let's have a look. Why does your court drop so much? Why does it go all the way down here every time? It's actually so annoying because look how long it takes for it to go up. 22 years to go all the way back up to 10. Ooh, okay. So my court grounder just went up to level 5, which means we only are getting a minus 20 now from being um, below our court grandeur, actually. So... A lot of these factions, I would think, should go away. Come on, guys. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I'm a nice guy. You got you like me now. Let's let's not disillusion my uh, the empire I worked so hard to build at this point. Okay, and also finally, um, it looks like enough time has passed where we can make a hybrid culture with the Russian Khazars, which will now be the Russo Khazaro. Giorgio Egypto Norse culture um, a bit of a mouthful, but you know, I think it works so far and There you go. So one thing I'm gonna do now that we have made the hybrid culture is I'm gonna get rid of all these light horsemen because if we look at the stats, right? They have uh, 22 base damage 15 base toughness 30 base pursuit and 30 base screen but if we destroy those and instead pick up the horse archers you can see these guys have 45 base damage, 20 base toughness, 40 base pursuit, and 30 base screen. So these guys are better in terms of pursuit and damage, which is yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. can be very beneficial to us. So I'm going to make 800 of these. Okay, so I just finished um, fabricating a claim on this county in the middle of Africa. And if you don't know why, it's because this is one of the place, one of the three places in Mali where you can make a gold mine building and these buildings are insane. You can see they increase your tax by five golds per month. That's the highest in the entire game from any one building. It also increases the county's holding tax by 20% as well as 5% for the development growth. Okay, so we won the war for the gold mine. We're going to want to um, increase the control over here. We're going to want to promote our culture here as well. Um, because I doubt these guys have battlements, and they don't. But already, when this starts increasing, you should see a huge increase in the amount of gold we're going to be making from this area. And the plus 20% holding tax is going to be pretty massive as well. And there you have it. We have finished the second tier gold mine um, down here in Mali. Our first second tier gold mine. And we're already making 17.9 tax from this county. I'm a little bit worried for when our son takes over, but hopefully he'll be able to fight off any uh, factions that will be rising up against us. Okay, it just happened. We're in a war also, which uh, probably not the best situation. I hadn't made this kingdom title, so it looks like he made it for himself. Uh, with good on him, you know, doing some good work. But you can see he actually has a opinion debuff with me. 
because there is a piece of land that should de jure be in his region over here that is actually a vassal of mine and this it's this principality over here one way we can just fix that is if we grant him a vassal we make sure that all his de jure lands are owned by him and his opinion actually goes all the way up to 32 which hopefully will keep him um, relatively happy with us here and stop him from joining this uh, independence faction that seems to be gaining a little bit of strength okay we got norsemen invading as we may have expected we do have a independence faction that's brewing a pretty decent amount of strength as well 238 percent of our military uh, meaning it would probably be somewhere around 60,000 men rising up against us. What I'm going to do is you can also see I've had this above vassal limit sign over here for a while. And that's because I actually have a vassal limit of 60 right now. And I have way more because I've kind of been splitting everything up along by duchies. But I think it's about time we consolidate all these duchies in the way of kingdoms. So there are a few kingdoms here like the kingdom of England that we can make. We also own some kingdoms like the kingdom of France or Burgundy. Um, so something we can do to kind of uh, make it a little bit easier in these factions is if we create those kingdoms or grant those kingdoms to certain vassals, it'll really increase our opinion with them so they'll like us more and then it'll remove all of the vassals, all of these duchies that are in these factions, it'll actually remove them from these independence factions because they won't be our direct vassals anymore, they'll be vassals of that king. So I can try to find some good characters like for France, I was thinking of granting it to this guy over here. You can see he has a big opinion with us. He's not in any of these factions, probably because he's a nice content and humble character. I was thinking of going over to him, granting him the whole kingdom of France like this. <laughs> and now actually, you can see he's kind of mad at us because he needs to also have all these vassals underneath him. So I think that also appears over here. Yeah, Grant Vassal to Rightful Liege. So we're going to go ahead and do this for him. So now he has even a more positive opinion with us because we have been granting him a ton of vassals and kingdoms. And we also got rid of some of these vassals like this guy here who was in that faction against us. He will now no longer be in the faction. You can see we brought it down from 260% um, to 193. So I'm going to go do that in a few other places. Like I want to do that in England also a few moments later so now instead of having to deal with a bunch of strong dukes we just have a few small kings who hopefully we're able to keep happy with us either through marriages or because you know they have good traits like this guy who's content and humble so he won't rise up against us i'm getting rid of caucasian wolves so i'm going to try to go for only the strong here because it's actually going to increase our knight effectiveness by 100%, which is really huge. I cannot explain how important that is. It also gives us two more knights, which is really important. What I just did was create a third duchy, because I can try to hold three duchies for a little bit. Right now, everybody really likes me, so this minus 15 for too many duchies isn't really a problem. But if we do hold three duchies... We can make a duchy building here, and I'm going to prove to you guys why it's more important. It's more important to think about the tax that a building gives out in terms of percentage than it is flat out. So if we were to build the Royal Reserves here, we would get 0.8 gold per month, but that would get boosted by the 25% uh, bonus that we have from the gold mines. So that would come to something around, I think, 1.0 tax per month flat out, which would make it an increase of uh, 0.2 tax per month but if we were, build, were to build the tax offices um, these things give me 10 percent more holding tax but in this holding we're making 21.12 tax right now because it's the holding where we have the uh, tier 2 gold mine we have maxed out economic buildings that would actually be an increase of 2.1 gold per month which is like way more than uh, the royal reserves like so much more valuable You know, when your main army is down here in Africa, you have some pesky empire that you completely forgot is bordering you, trying to invade your land. You just take all of your peasants and you just run them in there. Doesn't matter how many of them you're gonna lose. You just overwhelm them with pure numbers. 
And even with our entire army race, you can see we're only going to be losing 22 gold per month, which is crazy. We also have a 5,000 gold reserve to, uh, to fund that. Oh boy, here I go killing again. That's a lot of damage. How about a little more? <laughs> All right, so if we look at our factions, you can see we successfully defended that that independence faction and now we have locked up all these nasty vassals who were you know not too happy with us i bet these uh these turkish characters over here where we're invading did not expect a european giant to come in but not only to be invading but to be invading with their very own horse archers which get a plus 45 damage from actually fighting in step terrain all right, so we're beginning to open the door to the east, guys. We have another kingdom um, that we can start doing holy wars on whenever their truce runs out with us and uh, start taking some pretty big chunks of land. My goal for um, taking the rest of the world is to take big chunks of land from kingdoms um, and then hopefully my vassals will take control of all of the little bits left behind. Like, that's what happened in Lotharingia. If you remember, we had, like, a bunch of territory over here that uh we just took like the kingdoms and then they were able to sort my vassals were able to sort themselves out and take the small regions that were uh existed in between my realms oh baby look at this so i remarried to this lady who i think was my niece uh and she has intelligent and robust and we we're actually able to have a son who has genius robust and comely which means that we'll be able to take the decision if we can play as this guy to um i think strengthen our bloodline and this gets us strong blood which makes it so that our chance of inheriting new congenital traits are plus 400 percent and um inheriting same ones we have is plus 40 percent as well as a small boost to our health overall so this is really big i think i'm gonna go ahead and do a giant holy war against um the arabian empire I'm annoyed of them being so strong. You can see they have 48,000 men of their own. So I want to knock them down a few pegs here. And then I can start um, just invading most of the Arabian Empire from this location. The good thing is we do have a really high supply limit in most of these areas, so we don't have to worry about losing supplies. Wait, wait. Oh, did I not do it? So lost. So you can see he's sending in his military over here, but they are absolutely no match for me. Oh man, look at that. 6,000 people killed in this battle. Another 8,000 in that battle. And then another 8,000 in the third battle. We have reduced them all the way down to 35,000 men from 70,000 just in a few months. And there you have it. We hit 100%. Uh, we get all of Egypt, which I have to say I like very much. Oh, jeezy pips, man. Man, of course. We had literally the perfect son lined up. Humble content two very decent traits he has pensive so we have him on a stewardship education and we get the beating pop-up like are you crazy and i guess i'm gonna go for craven it does lower our vassal opinion by five. Oh man but that actually sucks i thought this guy was gonna need the perfect heir to play as all right guys it's getting crazy at this point we just stack wiped a 13,000 man army with our 5,000 man army of men at arms not only are our units like insanely strong with the uh, buffs from our domains um but our knights are just killing it 244 percent knight effectiveness and they all have to be above 12 to be even in my army but you can see we have a lot of them way above that also guys we had finished researching windmills which means we can actually upgrade all of our gold buildings to the next tier so i'm gonna go ahead and do that 
so that means one silver mine, two gold mines from tier two to tier three. We're making 91 gold per month right now, but we'll see just how much we're making after all three of those finish. Money. All right. So right here, you can see we have the large gold mine finish, large Argentina mine finish and large gold mine finish. And you can see that brings our gold up to 108 per month. That's an increase of, I think it was 17 gold per month from those three buildings. I think I'm probably ready to do another war against the big Arabian kingdom here. I don't really know which kingdom I want to go for, but yeah, let's just go for the biggest amount of land, launch the war. You can see it said they had 66,000 men, um, which is actually more than we have, but they're also in, they have negative 816 gold. Why are you running? Why are you running? Not entirely sure where they're running to. They're just losing tons of men while trying to escape me. And we will catch them over here. And of course, completely stack wipe them as well. And there you have it. We hit 100% enforce our demands and we get this huge piece of land over here it's starting to look like we potentially have maybe half the map right now we might be halfway there but we've made a huge amount of progress uh as this character we're playing as right now unfortunately our son somehow got the great pox trait but i think you can get rid of the great pox I'm not 100% sure, but I'm hoping next time he has a chance to uh, heal himself because he is our court physician, he'll be able to do that. Okay guys, there we go. We're going to have to make sure we don't have this big independence faction that's going to want to pass. The good thing is we do have three kids at least, so that's three allies we can make. Oh yeah, so I also have this decision that I talked about because I have these three um, congenital traits. We can strengthen our bloodline. And now you can see that gives us a small health boost, which is probably going to be important because we do have the uh, pox. And how long until this goes away? Okay, this is almost done, at least. The uh, worsened disease symptoms that I got because I failed in uh, healing myself with the great, the great pox. We have a populist faction from uh, the Arabian Kingdom that I just took. That's probably going to rise up, but that's okay because there are going to be a bunch of peasants. Very easy to kill. It's really this independence faction we don't want to go through. So let's hit play here and see how many people join this. Hmm. Not amazing. So I can arrange some marriages actually with both of these guys. That might be the play. Excellent. Excellent. So that's going to get rid of the two strongest guys in here. We both have 11,000 men. And I could at least set up a marriage for now with my good son to um, one of my other kingdom's daughters. She actually has intelligence, so it might not be the worst trade-off at the end of the day. So I was looking through some of my um, items here in my court, and this one actually gives my vassals plus eight opinion with me. So that's pretty good. I also had this crown that gives me plus one domain limit that I just wasn't using. And then I also had this, uh, this item here, which gives me plus one piety and temple construction cost, which is actually pretty crazy. So now it looks like, there you go, I will not be threatened. We are going to be fighting a total of 64,000 men. These are the guys rising up against us. Okay, and here comes the peasants rising up against me. How many of them we got? 56,000. They're all going to be located down here though, so I probably will send one of my armies um, to deal with those guys. Okay, so we're doing pretty well in these wars. I'm fighting off some peasants over here. And I think that's the last of them actually, and it is. So now I don't have to worry about fighting on two fronts. I can move this army over here. And then there are also some, um, they're not all of the rest of my vassals here, but we've done a good job killing a bunch of them already. And we should win this battle here as well. And in about one second, we will hit 100%. We can lock up all of our naughty vassals and we can commence the uh, redistribution of all of their land now. See, the problem with some of these vassals is when they have kids, they often do pass, pass down their good traits to them. Like you can see this lady, I'm sure when we granted it to her uh, her father, he had humble, he passed it down to her, but he she also somehow got the ambitious trait, which gives him minus 15, which pretty much, off, pretty much offsets this humble, which has a plus 10 of your uh, vassal opinion. That's what's going to happen, you know, when people die and their kids become in charge, maybe they won't like us as much, but 
I think as long as we're able to keep doing what we're doing in terms of uh, making most of the vassals like us on the transfer of power, we won't have too much problems. Oh my goodness, this is perfect. We finally were able to get rid of the great pox. So now we actually have amazing health. We don't even have to worry about this character anymore. That's so good. So I just picked up um, Divided Attention and that gives us two more domains. So I'm holding 16 domains now. I revoked like this castle and one of the temples down in Africa. And we brought our total gold income to 156 and our troops to 67,000. We are just like on top of the world right now. Okay, so it looks like we had a bit of a surprising death here. Our father was wounded and he did get the not feeling well, which is like when somebody's trying to murder you. So we're going to be playing as our son. He's only 18 right now, which is like, you know, a little bit suspect. We'll have to see if there's going to be an independence faction that rises up right now. Doesn't look too bad. Honestly, yeah, I think I'll go diplomacy just for the opinion. Um, and then we can do things like thoughtful, which will get us opinion from gift sent. And we do still have a good amount of money, so that should be okay. It looks like this independence faction actually is hovering around just over 100% in terms of their strength. And the good thing about that is I do have a sister who is unmarried. So we could always see if we got like this guy over here with England, we could actually arrange a marriage. My sister, he will accept that. And that actually gets rid of the strongest member of that faction, which is very, very nice. I had just declared war for, uh, for Sweden so we can start invading this. I think if we win some battles, maybe if I like put myself as a commander even, it might be a risk because we could always like die, but um, I'm the captain. if we win some battles, I would get a ton of prestige and maybe we could go all the way up to illustrious. They're going to attack us here, but there you go. We win it very nicely. Did I gain? Yeah. So look at that. I did gain a thousand two hundred fame from that battle and they're going to keep attacking me. Uh, we actually went all the way to Exalted Amongst Men, or we went all the way up to Illustrious just from winning those battles, which is pretty decent. So now I can replace myself as the commander because I do not want to die. And we can just continue to invade Sweden. Oh, and look at this. We can actually negotiate an alliance with this guy. I thought we needed a perk to be able to do this. Oh, but maybe it's because we're so intertwined, um, me and France. Because have, I have been marrying a lot of my kids with France that we can actually negotiate an alliance like this. He accepts the alliance. It drops the military faction down to only 73% power. And can we actually arrange a marriage now that we just had this daughter who is my player heir? This lady does though. So we can arrange a marriage with her, with my daughter. Send the proposal over. Alliance form. And there you go. We dropped it just below the threshold. And the threshold is 65%, so like even if they did rise up against us, we'd probably be able to beat them very easily. And we have also finished our war on Sweden. <laughs> wow, so I'm invading um, the, um, the, the kingdom of Mesopotamia now. And I think we're going to be fighting like 12k dudes with our 3k army here. They were tricklers, so that definitely helps, but let's look at the totals. Yeah, so we had 3k, they had 14,000 men, and we absolutely destroyed them. No surprises. Pursuit phase, beautiful. So pretty much with like my 6,000 um, men at arms uh, that I have, I can, I can take out 20k armies, essentially. Maybe even more. And finally, we were having... Uh, we weren't having many kids with our wife because I realized our character is gay. Why are you gay? But uh, the kids we did have, we had two daughters. And then finally, right now, we got pregnant again and we got two sons. Let's look at them. Oh. Wow. Okay, a little disappointed. We don't have a genius, but I guess we can take this guy. At least he's robust, handsome, and intelligent. We also have a uh, crusade against Hellas, the kingdom down here. I think if we win this, I put my half-sister there. I think we might have an opportunity to vassalize her because she'll be a kingdom and we're an empire. So that might be a way we can get another piece of land. But either way, I'll just be interested to see what happens. Also, helping in this crusade will get us a lot of piety, as you can see, if we do a good job. So that's always good because then that just means more holy wars for us. Let's go. Whoa, why do we have 25k people over here? 
interesting. Oh, and we actually already hit 100%. All right, Mr. Pope, you can uh, call it. There you go. That just means we can do two or three more uh, Holy Wars for Kingdoms now. I think I'm going to get rid of Industrious. Try to find another um, tradition that I like. We honestly don't need development at this point. Like, our research is so fast. Ooh, okay, I think I found what I want to do. So we've mostly been waiting for Piety um, in order to do Holy Wars. So I think I'm going to try to pick something up that gives us more Piety. And one thing that I saw that looks pretty good, actually, is this, uh, our linguist tradition. It says it gives significant piety every time you successfully learn a language. That seems good. The other one is merciful blindings. Like, we could just go around blinding people to gain piety. Uh, I guess it'll be interesting. I'm not sure. Do I want to look this up and see which one actually gives more and is more valuable? Ugh, I guess I will. So, blinding gets 100 piety and then learn language which is what was it called even 500 piety for successful learn language hmm they both seem pretty valuable i'm not gonna lie 500 i think for learning language is good our characters are always pretty smart too so we can try replacing this it's gonna take eight years to go through but that's fine let's see if we did want to like learn language right here 95 percent chance so i think that is probably valuable we do have a lot of prisoners, but I'm not sure if it would we could just blind every single prisoner. Mm, I guess we would. Whatever, I, I think either way it, it works out. It doesn't really matter in the end. Whoa, and look at this. The Arabian Empire has finally disintegrated. Oh my goodness, what a mess over here now. Wow, dare I say it, but it looks like we're almost done. Like, we have a pretty healthy amount of the entire map already. I say already, but I've been playing this game for God knows how many hours at this point. I have room for a dynastic legacy. I haven't really showed you guys every time I pick these up, but I got all of blood so that we can have um, heirs with good traits. And then the first one, I think I had showed you guys sea wolves, which ended up not being that useful. But the second one will be useful because you can see it makes it adds plus two to the maximum size of our heavy infantry regiment. So that means we can actually go to 14 for these two guys, and you can see they do a lot of damage, plus 114% damage on my Varanian veterans. I have to say, you do not get tired of just absolutely stack wiping armies that are twice your size. It is uh, still as fun as ever, I will say. Oh, I didn't even realize this, but my half-sister who has Hellas here, you can see she doesn't have any kids. She's 45, hasn't had a single kid. She married a guy, a leper for some reason. So that makes us her primary heir, so we can just murder her. And when she dies, we'll get this whole kingdom for ourselves. It's time to go! So I did successfully kill her. So we got this land, which I do enjoy. But unfortunately, people discovered that I did kill her, so I'm gonna have minus 15 with all my vassals now. Um, but minus 15 is okay, I think. Like, uh, send a couple of gifts, you know. We'll get these guys out of these factions very easily, just like that. We have also embraced the linguist traditions. So now if I click on my wife, I can learn her language. I think you can only learn four languages, like it said there. So maybe the blinding ones would have been better. But four languages, 500 piety per pop, that's another 2,000. And like, we're pretty close to getting 600 because we get like 10 piety a month anyway. Um, I think it'll just give us enough that so we won't really be waiting um, too much. So they got 50,000 men. I just declared war over here in northern India. They're going to attack me. I am standing on a mountain's tile. I have the high ground. Could we do it? 50,000 versus 10,000? I am raising some uh, levies here just in case. But I feel like we might be able to survive even with one-fifth the amount of men that they have. But let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we did lose 2,000 men. That's like a lot of men, but we were still able to do a whole lot of killing. So we won this war, but I have to say they put up a pretty good fight. We fought them over here and they killed 5,000 men actually. So kudos to them, but you lost anyway, so it doesn't matter. 
And now we have a very nice inroad into India. Oh, okay. And there you have it. Okay, so we just got another person out, bringing the strength down to only 118%. But I have married all my kids, and these people don't look... It doesn't look like I'll be able to improve my opinion with them. So we might have to fight these guys off, but honestly, I think that's going to be okay. Nobody is really that strong, like 7,000 for these top guys here. Let's see, maybe you that feast... Mail. No, okay. So we will have an independence faction that's going to rise up here. Um, Strength-wise, 100,000 people. It's the strongest one we've had so far, but I mean, we still have 82,000 plus. We have just way better men-at-arms than these guys. So what I did last time, which I found worked really well, is I found the strongest people who were kind of near each other, and then I fought them all at once. So I'm trying to see here if we have anybody who's like a bunch of people who are near each other, and I might just raise them in Central Europe to fight these guys. So I'm going to go ahead and raise as many men as I can. We have enough money to be able to support our big army, I would think. There you go, a good stack wipe on... Um that guy who was in the faction okay another victory here pretty good pretty good we've already reduced their army quite a lot all right so i really didn't even have to fight them that much like you can see they still have eighty thousand men the fact of the matter is because this ticks up because defender controls war target and as long as you just continue to take land like you can see we have all our armies trying to take some land for us we will eventually hit 100% and we can enforce our demands just like that. Disband all the armies. I'm going to go through and do the same thing. Revoke all of the uh, titles from people who don't like us. And after we go and do that, we should pretty much be ready to go to uh, start doing a whole bunch of new Holy Horrors for Kingdoms. And maybe, just maybe, finish taking... The entire map as his character pope decided to launch a crusade against jerusalem um i'm gonna try to do the same thing i did in uh the kingdom of hellas where you win the crusade i put my this random guy my cousin as a beneficiary he doesn't have any kids so we run a murder scheme on him we get the kingdom for ourselves and then everything works out perfectly and there you go um we have won the crusade Oh no, what the heck? He actually has a brother. Oh, and his brother has a bunch of kids. Didn't plan that out very well, but uh, we'll have to take this land away from him eventually. And at least we did get a full uh, war chest from being number one in that crusade. So we got 3,500 piety now, which is a lot of holy wars we can declare. Oh man, so we're finally, finally getting something interesting here. I'm in the middle of fighting a war with the Indians who have a total of 54,000 men. And look at this, we just got war declared by pretty much the entire Iberian Peninsula. It's this guy with ally to, uh, I think this other huge kingdom down here. So 26k plus 43k. And they are declaring war for, I think this is like the Duchy of Barcelona. That's like a pretty big yikes for me. Um, concerning my entire army is literally across the map fighting in India right now. Okay, so we actually pretty quickly were able to win this war. Um, should I just ship them over? How long would it take for me to sail all the way over here? 10 months? Man, not bad. I guess we'll send them over. Because I think if you disband them here and try to raise them over there, it'll take equally as long, if not longer. Alright, so um, 10 months later they have 36% uh, war score, they've almost taken the whole thing. And we have arrived here. The real question is, they have 80,000 men, should I raise any more men myself or just run in with like 23,000? I can definitely take care of this army at least, I don't know why they're all the way up here. Bruh, I don't want to fucking play a board game right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Oh, and it looks like they're actually retreating. 
Oh yeah, so they're gonna all trickle in here, or at least most of them will. And there you have it. They threw themselves into uh, my army a few more times, getting me some more nice stack wipes on them. And we hit 100% in that defensive war. First defensive war we had fought in a battle, uh, in a while at least. And yeah, we've pretty much reduced these guys to uh, to almost nothing. It could be a good idea to like reverse war them here. But the problem is I don't really have any, I can't do holy wars against these guys for some reason. Like it's kind of hard to get a piece, like a big enough piece of their land. So we are officially in the year 1200. That means that we're going to start going into late medieval. We have a very high average development. So this is only going to take two years to go through and then we can start researching all these very nice late late medieval texts. I'm wondering if it's going to be worth it to go for primogenitor so that I don't have to worry about um, my land splitting on succession and then I can kind of just have as many kids I want and then marry them off to all my strongest vassals and I will never really have to worry about factions ever again. I uh, murdered my son's wife and set him up with this lady who has the beautiful trait because that's going to give her more fertility and hopefully she's 24 he's 36 so hopefully they'll just be pumping out kids i didn't even notice this but we have um we've actually hit 100 development in these three uh counties that we've been holding since the beginning of the game near rome the other ones are a little bit lacking with like 37 and then uh 40 50 in the gold mine counties but uh, that would explain why our research speed is so fast right now. We're getting an average development of 1.4 from all the uh, counties with our culture. And you can see it's going to be less than two years until we have primogenitor. And then we can switch to this one right here, which will be done in six years. And then cranes, which will be done in six years as well. Ooh, look at this. The Mongols have actually arisen here. They have 40,000 men on their own. And the thing about the Mongols is they get... 23,000 of these special soldiers and I'm pretty sure a lot of these guys are those uh, really crazy horse archers so it would be pretty crazy if they tried declaring war on us and we had to defend against them okay so we just researched primogenitor so we're gonna go for um, that one next and we can actually change our, our succession to primogenitor right now I would think oh I have to have high crown authority so we'll go to high crown authority We'll go to primogenitor where my oldest child inherits all my titles because all my vassals approve of that so we'll get that done before we actually start playing as our next character which is good all right it's all happening at once now we got the mongols have decided to declare war for my entire empire okay okay well i guess not my entire empire but my whole new zealand empire okay and now where are the mongols invading us that is the question Okay, so I think I've amassed enough um, peasants. We're going to run through, although I don't really want to fight them in mountains where they're defending. That's probably not a good idea. Or honestly, it might be a good idea to attack them in mountains because their special horse units won't be very good there. While we have, um, let me find them, we have these heavy cavalry units which actually get bonus damage in mountains. So I think I will try to get them in there. Here we go. Oh yeah, and look at that. It said we were going to lose at one point in that battle, but there is no chance that happens. We've destroyed their horse archers. Look at that. All right, I just knocked the Mongols back again. Should get this to 100% relatively soon. I'm not sure what's going to happen to them, other than they're going to pay us a thousand gold. Looks like they don't actually collapse. I wonder if, like, just down the line they'll be able to try another war against us, but... I guess we'll see what happens, kind of. One year away from uh, playing as our son, and he still only has two kids. So there might be a problem with setting up alliances, but you know, we'll have to fight through it. Oh, so we're getting no money from our vassals right now because we are above our vassal limit. As you can see, that's giving it a uh, pretty horrible oh multiplier. Um, we are 26 vassals above the limit, but like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I can't grant away empires or else they'll become uh, independent realms. Like, let's say we have France here. If I want to grant to this guy, you can see right now he's going to be in independent because we're, we're only an emperor ourselves. Like, we need a title rank called, like, Super Empire or something. I think my crown actually had given me more vassal limit, but it got destroyed somehow, which is actually pretty bad. Like, I let it break. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can do to get my vassal limit up. 
I just died. I'm gonna have to do a few things as this new character. First of all, I want to regulate our vassal limit. Okay, so I went through and anywhere I had a duchy, oh, like right here, um, anywhere I had a duchy that was alone as one of my vassals, I've just been, I've just been granting away to a kingdom and we're able to get down to seven direct vassals over the limit now. What I probably should have been doing, oh, we have another one here, very nice. What I probably should have been doing is instead of like granting one kingdom to each vassal, like let's say when I'm taking land down here in Africa, I could have been like, okay, you're going to be my king who has these three African kingdoms and then grant all of those to that guy. If um, a faction does rise up, although as you can see, we're able to get our vassal tax up to over 100 and we're able to get our men back to 100,000, which reduces the faction strength by quite a bit here, which I really like. But if this still goes through and we have to redistribute some of these kingdoms, we can just grant the whole kingdom to um, some of my other kings that are nearby in order to get this back down to below the limit. We were down to like 30,000 troops before and we were losing about 100 gold a month, which is definitely not acceptable. If nobody else actually joins this faction, we could just do a few things like arrange marriages. I think my daughter can marry this guy's son, send that proposal, and there you go. We actually drop it down so it's too weak to send um, to go through. And as long as we keep everyone's opinions high for us for just the next little bit of time we should be a-okay honestly we let the short rain burn off we uh hopefully go up to illustrious and paragon of virtue pretty soon and then we won't have any problems oh my goodness man these mongols are gonna fight me again for my uh my empire and again while i'm in a war in india like can you just let me breathe for a few seconds okay we won this war Force our demands and again they love fighting in these areas that have no supply limit like it's actually so annoying oh man we didn't even need uh the second army this army was actually big enough to fight off those mongol armies boom boom did we stack wipe the entire mongol force i think we did oh my goodness let's take a look they only have 2,000 men like, you should just lose the war. I don't know why they don't just lose outright after that. That is hilarious. And there you go. We beat the Mongols again. They're going to have to pay us another 1.4 thousand gold. The Iberian struggle is over because we can finally declare war on these stupid guys who are in Spain. And that is exactly what I'm going to do next. I have been meaning to give it to these guys in Spain for the longest time. Okay guys, we also just got cranes, which is huge. I didn't show you, but um, down here, wherever I had the gold mines and silver mines, I already upgraded my castle to tier four, which is the highest it can go, because that means I can go ahead right now and upgrade all my gold mines to tier four as well. And you can see that's gonna be an increase of three gold per month each, as well as 30%. So get ready for us to be making a shit ton more money. money. Um, I think we can also upgrade all our temples to tier 4 in Rome and as you can see these bad boys are still getting that insane discount of a hundred percent. We are only paying 85 gold for something that should cost 850 and it only takes six months to uh, go through so we're gonna upgrade all these temples and then we can upgrade all the buildings in them because they're so so very cheap. Okay, so we're in the midst of a huge battle here in Spain. Um, I think we're going to come out on top only because our advantage is so high above theirs because they were starving. But look at these numbers. We're actually fighting um, 80k men and we lost 10,000. That's like the most we've lost in a pretty long time. And there you go. So we hit 100%. We finally get to take this whole... Spanish kingdom for ourselves. Oh man, that looks much better with us having a big old piece of Spain. I forgot this one even existed, but I'm going to take um, making a killing, which gets you gold, five gold per 100 casualties. So we have been spending our gold on our buildings recently. So you can see we only have 3,000 when we had like 20,000 before this. But get ready to see some absolute crazy numbers when we get into battles. Like we are going to be getting so much money from that. This could be our first example over here.
right there you should have seen we got a few stack wipes and look at that 7,000 from the first stack wipe which gives us 395 gold and then 7,000 again which is 355 gold so we made a little bit more than 700 gold from just those two stack wipes and they weren't even the biggest ones because like this uh northern kingdom isn't really that strong just imagine for when we get back into a war with these guys down here who have uh 20 000 plus another 20 000 allies where you're just going to be raking in money now from all the kills we're getting pick up a new tradition and look at this one it gives me plus 30 vassal limit that would get rid of all my problems with vassals and we can start just granting away kingdoms again so i think i'm going to pick this up it's going to take six years but i think that's going to be well worth it I just started a holy war for this entire kingdom over here and this is a really strong empire we're fighting they have 43,000 men on their own so plus on now you know it's like 15k allies one of the strongest we've probably fought all game i'm not gonna lie but if we do win this we're gonna reduce them from like you see all this territory they have right now to all that territory minus this kingdom so we're pretty much gonna destroy them here 240 bombards right here giving me 15.6 siege progress per day it doesn't even matter if you got a tier 3 castle with the uh, uh, level 5 walls and towers i'm going to destroy those walls right now oh my goodness so uh guy in charge of the mongol empire had died i didn't even know this but do you get more special soldiers when your second mongol guy takes over i thought it was it splits but maybe it only splits after the second mongolian emperor dies but uh he looks like he declared war on us again and he still has thirty-one thousand of these special soldiers so we'll have to uh beat him one more time okay so we should tick to a hundred percent before they come back i had my armies all spread out here just so uh they wouldn't lose too many supplies from standing on the mountains because what I was doing was just hiding on the mountains waiting for them to attack me because they thought they had so much so many more men than me and then we would win because their horse archers would all be useless but we hit 100% so get to enforce the demands and there you go we took the capital got another nice 9,000 kills for 500 more gold and we can just enforce our demands wait a minute oh I didn't even realize the Mongols declared war on us again Oh, and they took over this whole kingdom here. They really are trying to like spread their way throughout Asia, but they're just running into me. Gonna have to send all my units back over there to fight them again. At least we almost have the entire um, Spanish peninsula. Ooh, and we just unlocked the tech that lets us go to tier 8 for all our military buildings. And look at this, from the regimental grounds from tier uh, 6 to 7 actually gets us one extra knight for each building. So that's pretty huge because I have... Uh, I think three or four of these in my control so i don't know if these mongols are distracted or what but i'm like kind of just avoiding them i don't really want to touch this step toward territory which they uh, declared war for because that's where they're the strongest those units they have are monsters in the step so instead i'm uh, just taking the north here where they have taiga and hills because they're less powerful over there because it doesn't really matter like which territories I take you can see I'm getting like 10 uh, I'm getting like around 10% for each one of these counties I capture and also as long as they don't hold the target we're gonna this is gonna keep ticking up to 100% so just a couple more counties and I think we'll have um, won the, the defensive war with the Mongols again here and there you have it okay so it looks like the Khan has died again Stroke. He still gets more special soldiers. What is up with that? I thought it splits up. Does it only split up once he has like a huge amount of land? God damn, he's just gonna declare war on us again. Oh my god, he's so annoying. And for this kingdom, they're gonna come and attack me over a river while I just captured their thing over here. So that's gonna give me a defender advantage from all these buildings. So probably won't end too well for them yeah I am building some um, upgrades over here in this region in the very tip edge of my empire where we have a where we have a county that actually touches the kingdom of Mongolia so I want to declare war for that kingdom but the problem is this whole area has such a low supply limit it's hard to even keep an army that's 
a good stack alive. I'm upgrading some buildings that give me more supply limit. Like if I get these forestry buildings to tier three, you get more supplies. If you increase the development, you actually increase the supply limit here. We have a few places where the supply limit should go up so we can actually support an army. Once that's ready, I can declare a war for the Kingdom of Mongolia. Currently, they're a bit involved in two wars over here against these duchies, and they are wasting some of their special soldiers because these guys don't replenish. Um, I'm going to let them do that, and the second these wars end, they'll probably want to have a war with me. So that's when I'll have to declare war on them. So we can be the attacker and they can be the defender. Oh crap, so I waited a bit too long, and uh, he's declared war against me. The good thing is it looks like he's taking my land over here, and that should be fine because we should slowly start taking to 100. As that happens, he might have to run all the way back up here to try to stop us from taking his land, and I think that's just going to end up being perfect for us. Holy crap, I just found a wife who has 59 stewardship. Holy shit, that's crazy. That lets, us, that lets us hold four extra domains that we currently have. This character we're playing as right now might have the most domains I've ever had as a character ever. Um, I don't even think I have another one to revoke. I don't even think I have... It's going to be possible for me to get 21 domains, but you know, we'll take uh, 20. That's still pretty freaking crazy. All right, we just got the notification that we're dying soon, but I really want to finish this war first. And there you go, we hit 100%. Thank goodness my troops were uh, beginning to get malnourished. Okay, so we died. Bound to happen. We're gonna play as our son who is pretty amazing. You know, he's genius, robust, comely. His health is good. We already have a son lined up who looks pretty decent. I guess we'll see if an independence faction even uh, rises up. I would think it would, but you never know, to be honest, you never know. Okay. The good thing though is that I have, like I said, five kids who I can try to marry off. A few moments later. And there you go. We bring it down to just below um, the threshold, and we should pretty much be good to go. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. You can't tell me 30,000 people want to rise up for this five year old doesn't make any sense to me so I think the supply limit is like not too bad where I'm probably ready to declare a holy war for the kingdom of Mongolia against this five-year-old we'll see how many men they send our way but I think we'll still be able to beat them if we fight strategically in mountains and in the taiga terrain and not in the open uh, steppe lands where they get the huge benefits okay so it looks like we're gonna catch some of the Mongols over here they're gonna get defended in hills which is a bit of a bummer but we also have units that do really well in hills so it kind of works into our favor also there you go i love that eighteen thousand kills and there you have it enforce our demands now what happens does it still stay the mongol empire what if we create the kingdom of mongolia so even if we create the kingdom of mongolia it still is the mongol empire not a huge fan of that i won't lie Oh my goodness, and look at this, right after I just take the kingdom from her, she declares war on me. Like, wh what are you doing? What's going on? And pretty easily we kill them. May have been starving a little bit, but got the job done. Alright, so at this point we pretty much have the entire world. There's no one who can even think of competing with us. Um, so I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go around and do some clean, like, declare war on any of these tiny areas that are nearby. We have like all kinds of uh, causes bellies we can do. At the end of the day, it takes a while to do that. Like you, it's just slow. You raise your man, run them over, get a hundred percent, blah, blah, blah. So I might go through a couple lives or I don't know how long, but I'll be back anytime something interesting happens or when we're slightly closer to finishing. Cause this actually takes a little bit longer than I thought. Okay, so um, I always have the Holy War option, but another thing I can do if I was running out of piety, which I'm not really, is I've been going around creating these empires because we have enough land to be able to do that. And when we own the empire title, which is like, let's take a look, you can see it has all this land as part of the empire. We can go ahead and declare war for this seize all du jour lands type of war, and we pretty much get everything that's in the empire. So this is a great way I can do wars for more than uh, 
let's say if like the duchy or if the kingdom isn't the entire place like if a land is split up also do you remember when i was increasing the development of this place here because i wanted to uh, invade the mongols and i needed higher supply limit i accidentally left my vassal on increased development over here for <laughs> way too long and you can see we brought it all the way up to 40 which is pretty crazy considering like the surrounding area is maybe like 10 as the highest so uh, we accidentally made like a little utopia up here in this uh in this northern forest north of the map so here i can really highlight what i was talking about with creating these empires i just took a tiny duchy here so i'd have enough land to create the empire of uh, mongolia and then i also created the empire of siberia and i don't think i have enough for this one but i did create this Turan empire and now if i were to declare war on the former uh, mongolian empire and seize all de jure lands you can see we're going to get their lands from these three empires uh, which if I wanted to do like holy wars for kingdoms, you can see we would have to do that separately, which would be slow, would be annoying. And this way, now that we really have like enough land to create all these empires, it should be a lot easier taking big portions of land from uh, some split up kingdoms. So at this point, we are very close to being done, guys. Uh, I just have a new character, so he's 25. He's definitely going to be the guy where we can do all this. I'm just going around and declaring war for uh, seizing all the de jure lands. Like I did it against these three regions right here at once because it takes such a long time to raise your army. It's like I might as well. I might as well go for three at once. Wow, look at this amazing crown we got. Our uh, core artifacts have just been nuts. The only thing that we're using that's not like a super rare is this random trinket because it gives us uh, same faith opinion so it pretty much gets our vassal opinion up by four with everyone so it's been pretty useful but this crown actually gives us plus one domain limit plus 16 vassal limit which is cool and then plus four vassal opinion which is also cool because it makes them less likely to join these factions against us all right next on the chopping block i think will be spain here we got four separate realms all ready to fall And there you go, the entire Iberian Peninsula is now ours, as well as most of the rest of the world. I had raised two armies, but for some reason it didn't split them. It didn't split the uh, siege unit, so I sent the wrong army over here. A little bit of a mistake. But you can see, even though we, we lost this battle, we only lost 3,000 men, but killed 13,000. So it's not really a loss if you think about it. And there you go, this time we win the battle. And it's not for the entire area because we can't make this duchy yet, but it's for this kingdom, which will hopefully give me enough land so I can create this duchy. And then I can just finish off next time when the truce runs out, I can grab the rest of their land. We'll just have these two realms plus Crete. And that's all we have to do. And we will have taken the entire map. So how long is this truce for? That's the question. Five years. Okay. So in these next five years, I will declare war on this place for the duchy. I'll declare war up here. And then we'll only have Crete left after this. Okay, I think I'm ready to declare war on uh, Crete. You can seize their de jure lands as well. I just ransomed 87 prisoners, so this might be popping up for a while here. So even though we were coming off a boat um, and attacking them there, we still managed to stack wipe everybody. And now the only place we have left in the entire world. Wait, actually. Oh, look at this. This place thought it could get away. Well, we're obviously going to have to take you as well. Yeah. So after this, we'll just have to wait for our truce to run out with these guys, which still has four years left. And then we will have conquered the entire map. The rough part is waiting four years is probably going to take forever because look how slow this thing is chugging along. I'm playing at a uh, times five speed here and it's just like the game cannot handle having this much territory under one person. It is freaking out as we wait for our truce to run out with the last person. Let's just take a look at our totals here. We're making 336 gold per month. Um, that's not even like holding the most domains I've held. I've had 20 domains in this game before. So this is one of the lower domains we've had. 
you can see prestige is crazy piety crazy as you would expect for all this stuff other than that though let's have a look in our capital the temples that we have in rome are making us each above 20 gold per month uh, our troop totals almost 500,000 men that is a crazy number and you can see our vassal tax really did turn around it used to be that our domain was pumping all our gold and uh, our vassals weren't really giving us that much but now i think the thing is how the hell did we get stressed out with the thing is once we started creating all these empires uh we became the rightful liege for all these characters so that makes it so that they give us a lot more tax per month none of them have that not rightful liege penalty and they're all giving me a ton of money as you can see um in terms of our men at arms We've went with like the same grouping that we've had for a while here. Our heavy infantries are getting boosted by almost 100%. Our archers are getting boosted by almost 100%. Our uh, horse archers, that is. And then our heavy, heavy infantry is getting boosted by 156%. That is crazy to me. These guys have probably been the best units that we've used. And these are some of the stronger units in the entire, uh, in the entire game. Oh, I just realized, look, we didn't have this one maxed out. Heavy, heavy calves, these guys are probably my favorites because of their boosts to hills and uh, mountains like we talked about. These guys, because of their crazy pursuit stat, you just get so many kills on retreating. And then the Varanian veterans, like what more can you say than just the pure amount of damage you do is nuts. And then of course we went with three stacks of uh, 170 bombards for that uh, siege progress. Like when we're invading Spain, you really need that because look, all these places, tier 4 castles with... Uh, tier 5 walls you definitely want to have the um the bombards to break those down oh man i don't know if you guys noticed but my, my voice sounds different when i started recording this video like a week ago i felt amazing you know i thought it was going so well but it really takes a long time when you get into the late game here the game starts chugging and and uh, i actually got sick i don't know if it's because of this video all the effort i put in here <laughs> but uh I feel like absolute shit right now. My wife is still pumping out the kids and they're all Herculean geniuses, so pretty nice. April 12th, 1324. Well, only about a year and a half to go, boys. Here we go, guys. About to go to April 12th. There you have it. So now if we right click on these guys, declare war, seize all de jure lands. Let's get this over with all right there you go raise all my men at arms army so we're gonna run into them here i kind of have a feeling like we're going to uh stack wipe their entire force yeah there you go stack wipe where we actually earn a thousand five hundred gold for stack wiping them and then we'll just run right into their capital and seize it down oh they're gonna try to stop me again silly guys but one more piece of land, and I think we will have won the game. Alright guys, there you have it. 100% disband the army. And we have done it. We have taken over the entire map. Holy crap. Oh, a Full world conquest with no mods, no exploits. Oh, I want to say it wasn't even that hard, but it did get a little sticky at some points. Some of those factions rising up were a little bit hard to deal with, but you know, once I had my men at arms army just running through stack wiping armies that were like three, four size times its size, it was pretty easy after that, honestly. It just took a long ass time to capture every piece of land i hope you enjoyed this video oh man i want to say it was fun to make but <laughs> it was so painful but i think at least it'll make for a good video all right guys as always i'll see you in the next one peace out